Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another episode of Becoming a Wild Drift Expert. And today we have another banger for you guys. This is Viv Esports against Gamelord. This is basically the lower bracket finals in Europe. The winner of this goes to the grand finals and then the winner of that goes to Barcelona to play in the qualifiers. So this was an intense game. And a quick little background for these teams, you know, before getting into it. Gamelord is known to be like a titan of Europe. A top two team, right? Like Gamelord and Rix, these are the two teams. And then Viv Esports, like before the tournament had commenced, this was quite an unknown team. No one really knew about them. And they were like, you know, whatever, it's a team, but you know, they're good, but they're obviously not gonna do something against these big teams. Viv Esports is ahead 1-0, as you can see. And Viv Esports made it to become at least a top three team in Europe. So that's the story behind Viv Esports. And just an absolutely incredible team. And we know Game Lord, right? We know how good this team is. So let's take a look at how this game gets played because I picked this game. I handpicked this game. And funnily, I was also casting some of these games. Um, this is going to be a good one. And I can teach you a lot about it. So if you look at their compositions, right? Like, I'm already going to start with a test your knowledge because this one is very, very, very important. And this one is going to teach you very important fundamentals into the game. So let's take a look at both compositions. Game Lord against Viv. When we have the first objective, the Dragon and the Rift Herald, right? At four minutes into the game. Who has an advantage? Which composition has an advantage? And why? There is a few main factors. Like obviously there's small factors, but there is a few main factors. Let us know in the comments. Test your knowledge. Pause the video right now because I'm going to be revealing it. So pause the video. Oh, right here we get a quick little kill by Zefta, by the way, which I'll talk about later, all of this. So the answer is Game Lord will win or they're, they're supposed to win. So let's talk about why. First of all, they have a Lee Sin. Lee Sin is an incredibly strong early game champion. Secondly, they have a Renekton. Yet again, an incredibly strong early game champion. But third of all, and most importantly, and this is also why Corky is like such a priority pick everywhere is the Corky package, right? Corky's package, it comes up at four minutes into the game and you can get it, go to an objective, you get bonus movement speed, so you'll always make it and you'll have a massive advantage during a team fight. And the game will get very interesting during those objective fights because when you're up against that Corky, it's really hard to play the fight as Viv Esports, right? Like the Corky package slows you by so much, it deals so much damage, it's super hard to do. So let's take a look at how Viv Esports plays against it because it's really important, right? Like I get a lot of, a lot of people asking like, how do you counter the Corky package? So I'm not gonna answer we're just gonna look at it so let's now focus more into the game we have zefta and i just want to let you guys know zefta in my opinion this is my opinion the best jungler in europe potentially even the best player and this guy is just not even normal and another thing as well by the way the support plays which i'm going to be talking about right now let's take a look at heste he's on the alistar and by the way right here lonely kid is trying to bait milip but milip knows what's up he didn't go too far so let's talk about heste which is the alistar if we look onto the map he's in the mid lane right now he is roaming around all the time and why is he doing that so there is a meta right now where um, especially in eu supports tend to be playing engaging supports like galio rakan alistar you know champions like that, that can go for heavy engages even braum because of his ultimate why because you can gank so we all know junglers like to gank but in esports we've seen a lot of supports actually gank themselves heste is one of them and he's constantly roaming around and this is a thing that you can do as a support as a support you don't have to stay in your lane you can gank and why can you do that look at the draft guys Redemption on Corky and Chronix on Zix. These are two champions that don't need a support. They can just maintain a distance, push out waves, and stay safe, right? These are all very safe champions. And that is why we're seeing a lot of mages being picked in the current meta, right? Like we're seeing Orianna, we're seeing Zix, we're seeing the Corkies in the in the dragon lane because the supports are constantly roaming around. Viv Esports, however, so okay, let's talk about the dragon right now. By the way, Viv starts the dragon. No. You don't do that, okay? You just do not start the dragon against this composition of Game Lord. So, as, as I said, this is where the game starts to get interesting, right? First, very important thing that we're seeing right now is the sweeper. I love to talk about sweepers because I feel like a lot of teams lack vision. And not only lack vision, uh, you know, like lack their own vision, they also lack denial of vision. What I mean with that, using a sweeper to deny vision. So yet again here, Tyrus is trying to start the dragon, but it's not gonna work. You can't. Like, you literally can't. If they start the dragon, Redemption and Heste are gonna go full in, and also Lee Sin, and etc, etc. Viv cannot win a fight. Like, Viv is not supposed to win a fight. So what can Game Lord do? They can start the dragon. See, the problem with Corky's package is, 
it has a 100 second timer and redemption picked it up at four minutes which means he doesn't have a timer anymore and as you can see he already used it because his timer was running out so he already kind of wasted it and right here with no quirky package viv esports are like hey guys let's go in and they go in and take a look at the junglers zefta boom he tried to smite it but he had to do an early smite to stay alive and tyrus calm and collective got the dragon and this is a massive win. This is a massive, massive, massive win for Viv Esports. Reason is because, like, Game Lord's composition revolves around that early game, guys. This composition revolves around the early game. And Viv Esports just took away an Infernal Dragon from them and they won the team fight. By the way, guys, make sure you give this video a like if you want to support the series, right? Like, we're making a lot of these series. The first series got a lot of love. But first, let's take a look at this replay. So, right here, Tyrus. Look at Tyrus. And beautiful, beautiful ultimate by Tyrus. He focused Zefta. And right here, Zefta smites the dragon just to stay alive. Which means that he cannot outsmite Tyrus anymore. So, Tyrus did the perfect call by using his ultimate on the Lee Sin. You know, making sure Zefta gets to a low, amount, low enough amount uh, HP to have to... Uh, smite the dragon and then Tyrus steals it. So Tyrus, phenomenal job right there, right? Viv Esports waited for the Corky to use this package after the package. Then they can go in. Then they have a chance to go in, right? Like, very, very well done by Viv Esports. Right now, there's still a Rift Herald, by the way. Then the thing with this Rift Herald is now Game Lord doesn't have a package and they're starting it off. And now let's look at Viv's response, guys. I love this and this is why I picked this game. This is the true macro level that you can have. So, especially also when you play solo queue. Do you always need the objectives? No, you do not. And Viv Esports is going to show you why. Look at the gold count. 22.7k. 22.8. Wait for it. Boom. 23.8. Viv Esports just got themselves a thousand gold across the board. Plus the turret plating gold, which is another 500 gold, by the way. Just for taking the first turret. And that is why dropping the Rift Herald is okay. Like, it's okay. Obviously, Gamert is doing a great job getting, getting something else, uh, something in response for it. But that's the thing that I mean. Viv Esports has a weaker composition in the early game. Even though Gamert doesn't have a package, as a composition, you know, when you're playing as the composition of Viv Esports, you know, when you're playing champions like Nasus, like Kill, like Ziggs, Orianna, etc., etc., Vayne, Jinx, you know, all these late game champions, you want to be avoiding conflict. And that's exactly what Viv Esports is doing. They went for the conflict during the Dragon because, you know, they saw that Game Lord had burned that package. And then, you know, they were like, all right, we can go in. Tyrus fully focuses after on the Lee Sin. They can go in, right? But this time they didn't bother. Like, why would they take the risk to go in while they could have just taken the bot lane turret? And as we look into this replay, right? Like, Game Lord's response was perfect. They went for the top lane turret. They killed Milip on the set. And they pushed the top lane turret without using a Rift Herald. So Game Lord's response, just as good as Viv's play, right? Like they trade, they, they trade it even. But you have to keep in mind, right? Viv Esports has an incredible late game composition. So this is still somewhat of a win. So right here we can see Heste pulling or mid up pulling back Heste. And Tyro is like, everyone is doing their best to kill the Alistar. But that's not the approach that you should be taking. Because like, as you can see, Heste did not even burn his ultimate. He still has his ultimate up. So... They just, like, Viv Esports just wasted such important ultimates. They wasted four ultimates to kill an Alistar, and they didn't do it. And when you're on the side of Viv, that's not how you want to approach teamfights. Oh, Fluor, look at Fluor right there. Forced to use a flash. Why is this happening? Vision, guys. As you can see, Redemption waiting in the bush right there when that fight happened. I have the vision and right here, pushing the mid lane turret as well, guys. So this is the true power of the Rift Herald. I feel like they may not be able to get it. It's going to dash. Oh, and Estes engage. Oh, my God. Look at this guy. He just went in with a three-man knockup. And even though they didn't get the turret, they killed Millip right there. Totally, totally worth it. This guy is just way too good. Heste, what an amazing player. And now they can push even further. See, the problem is they're up against Kranix on the Zix. And as you can see, exactly. Kranix is pushing out the wave. And Heste is never going to be... Or uh, Game Lord is never going to be able to push a turret. And right now, Game Lord is overextending. They're going to be dying to Viv, as you can see. Tyrus is going for those kills. But meanwhile, Zefte sneaking the dragon away, guys. And Viv Esports doesn't have a ward on it. As you can see, Viv has a ward below the dragon, but not on the dragon. And Viv Esports is just being completely caught off guard. And Zefta was able to easily secure this dragon. And then, yeah, Corky package, whatever. Ooh, Corky flashes into his team, uses the stasis, gets Tyrus all the way there. And yeah, 
they just disengaged. They got the they got the Cloud Dragon, which is a total win for them. Fine for Gamer. Gamer did a phenomenal job right there, trying to siege the tower. Unfortunately, weren't able to get the tower because Kranix on the Ziggs. As I said, like that's the, that's the thing. Ooh, that you have with, with champions like the Zix and the Corky. They can push out waves very easily. So they can either push turrets fast or they can deny the enemy from pushing fast. So that's the power of Zix, guys. <clears throat> so Sharks is actually playing mid lane Garen, by the way. And that's what I love about esports. We, we, we see the craziest picks ever. And uh, yeah, as we look into this replay, there it is. The power of Garen just destroys the Gragas right there. And look at him, like Sharks just going in, he's never gonna die. And I just love Heste's Alistar, by the way. Like, you'll see more of this during the late game. You know what's funny? Heste's Alistar got banned. I don't want to say it wrong, but I was casting the games. And from what I remember, every single game after this one, Heste's Alistar got banned. He was never given the opportunity opportunity to pick Alistar unless he did it in a first pick. But every single game, Heste's Alistar got banned. So that should show you how good this guy is on Alistar. Ruiz as well. He went for the Rod of Ages Rabadon's Death Cap build. So as a, as a full AP Gragas, you can go for two builds. Rod of Ages Rabadon's Death Cap or Ludens Echo Rabadon's Death Cap. Ludens Echo gives you way more damage in the early game. Rod of Ages gives you more tankiness in the late game. And they seem to be going for the tankiness because they want to be dealing with that Zix damage. Because Zix kind of struggles killing tanks. So that's why. Here, yet again, as you can see, Viv Esports is just not bothered, right? Why would they go for that fight if it's not good for them? And right here, wow, Milip just catches out the Gragas like it's nothing. And now the one that's going to be pushing is going to be Viv Esports. Yet again, Redemption on the Corky is going to be able to, to deny this push, but Heste has none of it. He doesn't even allow G Viv Esports to go in. Tyrus with a flash combo going under the turret. And this is what Viv can do. They get the turret regardless, as you can see. Lonely Kid coming in way too late. And sure, he may be able to get some kills, but he's He's not going to be able to survive for long in that composition of Viv Esports, but Heste, guys. Heste, just not afraid of ever anything, but it doesn't matter. Viv Esports aces Gamelord, and they're going to get another turret now. So not only did Gamelord lose this turret, they lost another one. So let's look at a replay to see what the hell happened here. All right, so take a look at the replay. Gamelord obviously got that Rift Herald, right? Like, you would think that Gamelord would get a turret, but Milip, boom. Ultra Ruiz on that Gragas gets a free kill already, so there's no more Gragas. That's already a big loss for Gamelord. Corky with no package. Heste is playing Alistar, which is not the best anti-siege champion. As you can see, he kind of desperately tries to go in, and then Tyrus in the backline completely decimates Redemption, and then it's just game over, right? Like, uh, Sharks is tanking the turret on the Garen. They take the turret as well. Lonely Kid tries to go in, but gets a exhausted by by Kranix and just perfect macro play by Viv Esports. They saved that exhaust, they knew that Lonely Kit was coming, they killed every single member of Gamelord and now they're pushing another turret. They got two turrets, an ace and a total fat win from that guys. Just phenomenal play by Viv Esports and that's not only it, they're gonna clear out the jungle, they're gonna put wards in the jungle and get total control of this game. And if we look into the map right now guys, Look at the wards, and they're actually showing a replay again in the game, which, you know, we can watch again. So let's uh, let's focus on Sharks, actually. He goes in, and he tanks the turret, as you can see. He's the one tanking the turret, and he doesn't go out of the turret range. Look, look at Sharks, guys. He stays under turret range on purpose. And these are the tiny little details that are so important to the success of Viv Esports. So a lesson that you guys can take out of this. Um, when you play a champion that is tanky, and what I mean with tanky is like, real tanky you know there is a few in wild Rift. garen uh mundo alistar and then not like none no champions that are as tanky as these but definitely champions that are tanky enough and, as, and also when you use the stone plate enchant by the way you can tank turrets so when you play into the late game you can tank those turrets so right here zefta catching out milip milip thinking that he can escape he should actually be able to escape he has a second ability to get a barrier as well tyra is going very aggressive by the way e way too aggressive i would say so Viv Esports surviving and Heste going back in, guys. This guy is fearless on the Alistar. Heste has used this ultimate, so he's not gonna die. And meanwhile, Ruiz is just going in. Heste, as you can see, didn't even die from that. Why? Because of the ultimate of Alistar. Basically makes you unkillable for 7 seconds. The problem that Heste has, however, against the composition of Viv Esports, is the true damage from Garen. And the true damage from Set, by the way, but especially the Garen. We all know how Garen's ultimate works, right? Like it's a bonk on your face and he destroys you. That's exactly what you can do on Heste as well. So even if you use your ultimate on Alistar, in Heste's case, 
Garen is still gonna bonk you. Garen is still gonna ult you. And the true damage is still gonna kill you. You're not gonna be reducing that damage. Right here, it's a bit dangerous for Viv Esports. Because Vi is not up. Tyrus on the Vi is not up. And he's not even getting a teleport boot. And Viv Esports doesn't have a lot of mana on their champions. This is not looking too good for them. And Redemption with the package as well. Like... Even though Viv is doing greatly in this game, as you can see, 49,000 gold against 46.8. I don't like this approach right here. And is Game Lord giving it for free? Game Lord gives the dragon for free. Now, I have to think about this one a little bit. Because there's no reason for them to give this one for free. Game Lord could have taken this fight. Like, when you have that package on a Corky, it doesn't matter that you're two or 3,000 gold behind. This package compensates for it, guys. The package absolutely compensates for it. Like, when you run through the enemy with that package, the enemies can just not touch the package. Because if they touch it, they get permanently slowed, and they get damaged so hard, because the package deals an incredible amount of damage. So, very interesting play from Game Lord right there, choosing to not go for the dragon. I mean, Mountain Dragon is not that valuable, of course. It's not the best dragon, but still, I mean... They could have used the Mountain Dragon very well against Chronix on that Ziggs. Uh... Yeah, I can honestly not explain that one to you. I would definitely say that they made a mistake, Game Lord, right there. They should have gone for that one. They could have fought it with the Corky package. Because right now, they didn't even use the Corky package. And with the Baron being up, not having a Corky package is pretty disastrous. Right here, Lonely Kid, you know, he can do some damage to the turret. Milip shows up, could defend it. But Milip can never solo kill a Renekton. Like, I don't even know what Milip is trying here, to be honest. He just wasted his ultimate, basically. Like, when you're playing a set up against a Renekton, especially in this case, as you can see, uh, Lonely Kid is actually 2,000 gold ahead, but even if he wasn't 2,000 gold ahead, set can't just, like, there's no way set kills a Renekton in a 1 versus 1. The champion is just way stronger in a 1 versus 1. And uh, when you're in the situation of mid-up, don't ult. Just go push him away. Save your ult for a fight, because that ultimate is incredibly important in team fights, especially up against the Alistar and the Renekton, because those have a lot of HP, and you can ult them into the enemy team and deal a lot of damage. So right now, oh, look at Shark. Wow, wow, that damage from Sharks. Level 14, Garen. What? Did you guys see that? Oh, Viv Esports goes for the Baron play. Oh, let's talk about this. Let's talk about this, guys. So, um, you know what's funny? The one editing this video, Jinko, made a guide fully explaining how Baron works. And uh, let's actually pause the gameplay right now. Because I quickly want to explain to you guys why this is horrible for Viv Esports. When you attack the Baron, like, Baron applies poison on all of the teammates, right? It applies poison on all of them, which happened to Viv Esports. It reduces your armor, and it reduces your magic resist for 5 seconds. So for the next 5 seconds, Viv Esports is going to be taking a fight with reduced armor and magic resist. So let's replay the fight and keep that in our minds and look at what happens. Alright, so back here with that knowledge, as I said, Viv Esports attacking the Baron right here, and slowly but steadily right now, Baron is shredding the HPs. As you can see, Fluor and Chronix are actually standing behind the wall, so they're not being affected by the Baron. They watched the video, just so you guys know, but Tyrus and Sharks are slowly but steadily losing magic resist and uh, uh, armor. As you can see, sure they get a kill on Ruiz, but they will have a disadvantage right here, right? Like, they will have a disadvantage. Zefta is behind there. They're taking a lot of damage from this Baron, guys. Like, there you can see Zefta going in the backline, killing Chronix as well, and even though they're seeming winning the fight they're not fully winning the fight and starting the baron like that is just very very risky to do because you will you will be losing armor and magic resist and it can be dangerous like if they continue doing that for a little longer they would have been very squishy and they could have just lost that fight and tyrus right there like you know as you can see they're just barely surviving with the skin off their bones guys so you have to be very careful starting off the baron like look I told you guys in the last series, which by the way, if you haven't watched it already, we'll put a link in the description. I'll ask if that is possible. Um, oh, before talking, they're doing it again. Viv Esports goes for it again. They're losing armor. They're losing magic resist. You continuously lose it and lose it and lose it up until 50 armor and 50 magic resist. And now they've lost a lot. And as you can see, this is when Game Lord goes in and they lose the fight and they lose the Baron. They lost the fight and they lost the Baron because the Baron debuffed them so much that they just weren't even able to win the team fight anymore. And this is what I was going to talk about. You can bait enemies with an objective 
but not with a baron, guys. I mean, sure you can, but you'll have be at a severe disadvantage when you do that. And this is a disaster for Viv Esports. Viv just lost the baron to Game Lord, and Game Lord got all of that gold. They got the kills. Elder Dragon is spawning. Disaster for Viv Esports. You could pretty much say that the game is over right now. Like, what? How did this game just turn around? So let's actually just take a look at that team fight again and see what the hell happened. Oh, it happens already. I don't even have to do it myself. So let's take a look at it. Viv Esports is taking a lot of damage, but it's not only damage. Their magic resistant armor is being reduced. Tyrus on the Vi gets killed, not only by Game Lord, but also by the Baron. He was taking a lot of damage from the Baron, and then Zefta just secured the Baron very, very easily. As you can see, even Heste is just completely destroying Fluor on the Nami right here. And Kranix, what can Kranix do without mana? Viv Esports just severely overestimating their power right here, taking the Baron when they shouldn't, you know, taking those debuffs, taking those damage, wasting the mana, and then just losing disastrously. And while we get back to the game, Game Lord took the Elder Ocean Dragon, guys. The Elder Ocean Dragon is theirs. And while the Ocean Dragon is not quite the strongest dragon, the Elder is, though. So right now, Tyrus has no chance winning against Lonely Kid. And honestly... The composition of Viv Esports is going to struggle because now Game Lord has true damage and Sharks on the Garen, his second ability is essentially going to be, well not useless, of course it's going to be blocking a lot of damage, but it's going to be not as useful as before because the true damage is going to hurt. And right now Viv Esports, like, even though they have a Zix, it's Baron Minions, guys. It's Baron Minions and when there's two waves of Baron Minions pushing into you, you're going to have a hard time and... Ooh, you can see how much damage Viv Esports takes, just desperately trying to hang on onto those turrets. They're actually doing a surprisingly good job, by the way. Another thing, Redemption has a package, so there is potential to do a big turret dive, and Heste would have to go in with his ultimate, and as you can see, Heste has actually taken a lot of damage, but... He can still dive in with his ultimate, because his ultimate will make him take like 70% reduced damage, and then a follow-up from Redemption with the package would have been very, very powerful. Right now, yet again, a waste of a package from Redemption, and... I don't like to see this from Game Lord. Perhaps they could have been a bit more aggressive right there. Because they just allowed the Ziggs to uh, uh, defend those turrets. Even though Game Lord had, those, had the Baron, they weren't even able to get a single inhibitor turret. Which is actually a massive win for Viv Esports. But yet again, this is now a severe disadvantage for Viv Esports. I talked about it before. Viv does have the late game composition. They definitely do. Like, by far. But not against an Elder Dragon, right? Like, the Elder Dragon changes the game, and that's the problem that Viv Esports has right now. Like, how are they gonna win fights? Now, it is the Elder Ocean Dragon, so it doesn't necessarily provide anything against burst damage. So I guess the only way to still do a lot in this game is to just 100% burst down an enemy from Game Lord. But obviously, when you're up against the Renekton, you're not gonna one-shot him, right? Like, Renekton is gonna heal back up with the Ocean Dragon, and that's the problem. Right here, as you can see, yet again, just Viv Esports desperately trying to defend those inhibitor turrets because they know if they lose enough inhibitor turrets the game is over and the baron is spawning this is it and what game lord is doing right now i understand the thought process right lee sin and corky are trying to get it um Keep in mind, Lee Sin and Corky are losing a lot of magic resistant armor, right? Like, keep that in mind. I want you guys to keep that in mind while watching. And look at what happens. Look at what happens. The exact same thing happens on the opposite side. This time, it's Viv Esports capitalizing on the Baron debuff. And unbelievably, Viv Esports is killing them off. Viv Esports is killing Game Lord's players off. Lonely Kid is still alive, but even with the Elder Ocean Dragon, which I said is very good in his situation, he's not gonna survive this, right? He's not gonna survive in a 1 versus 3 situation. As you can see, he's doing a lot of damage because he has it. But he doesn't survive. And the game is over. Viv Esports take the victory, even though Game Lord was supposed to win that game. Look at Sharks, by the way. He doesn't even care about anything. He's playing the Garen. Oh my god, and that damage guy is unbelievable, and they just win the game. Viv Esports takes the victory in what looked like a free game for Game Lord. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any suggestions on which games I should cover, put them in the comments. And thank you very much for watching, and I will see you all in the next episode. Bye-bye.